everyone again and welcome to another episode of last place fire team i am your host this week uh chris and uh also with me my two co-hosts as always yendi how you doing man good good how are you guys doing all right man doing all right and alan me hello everyone <laughs> <laughs> Uh, real quick, guys, uh, today's episode is going to be a special one for uh, our live viewers. Um, today, we are going to be doing a live version of the LPF debrief uh, segment that me and Alan have been doing, and we do have a special guest with us for that, and that is Yendi. Uh, we will be what? talking about Jungle Cruise. I know it's crazy. We're still going to shame him for all the other stuff. Don't worry about that. We'll, we'll get that. Please, we'll get please. to that. And the, we'll have Yendi shame Yendi in the episode okay. so inception, yeah be sure to tune in inception change. <laughs> yeah be sure to stick around for that um uh if you haven't already go and check out our youtube videos uh the last one that we have up there right now is our Le our loki uh season finale um and of course like i said we're gonna have a new video this week and then next week we'll have uh suicide squad so look forward to that uh also another thing is uh we are doing another mouse giveaway um Yendi, do you happen to have it on your desk? No, I'll go right here, though. Okay. Yendi's running for yeah, the mouse. He's... There it is right there. Uh, Steel Series uh, Rival 3 Wireless. Uh, whenever we hit 100 subs on YouTube is when we will be giving that away, and we will have more information for you guys uh, when that comes around. Also, as always, if you want to be a guest, be sure to shoot us an email. Uh, let us know. We would love to have you on the show to talk about uh, game news or anime news or movie news, whatever you, whatever you want to talk about, we'll build the show around you. All right. So, uh, I guess I'll, uh, -oh. Oh. <laughs> um, oh, if you, for our audio listeners, Alan disappeared into the void, but, uh, <laughs> well, I guess we'll start with the end of you right now. Um, how is, how's your week been, man? What have you been playing? Been playing anything, man? No, no, just besides, uh, the typical, games that i play every week a little bit of warzone and then that's it i i have been getting more and more not getting into but uh thinking more and more about new world the mmo from amazon every time i see something from it it's just adding on to the the, the want the desire to to play it and so far everything negatives positives that i've seen i'm okay with i'm okay with the negatives and it seems like the positives far outweigh them but we'll see when it comes to it uh, at the end of this month, August 31st. So other than that, work, and that's it. All good. Nice, nice. What about you, Alan? Have you been playing anything this week? I just played today. I played Apex. Mm -hmm. uh, season 10 has started today. New character Seer's <clears> in, <throat> in there now. We're doing uh, six days of World's Edge, which uh, my least favorite map. But I played some of that today. I um, haven't played anything since I beat um, Raji. So... I'm actually working on a couple of, well, no, I haven't started them yet, but I downloaded the Ascent and, um, what's it called? Oro, uh, also on Game Pass. So I downloaded those two. I think those are going to be the next two games I, I try to beat. And then, yeah, that's, I haven't played anything. And I finally downloaded Pokemon Unite. I haven't started it, but I, I, it is downloaded my, we is set up. I mean, my Switch is set oh, shoot. up. Oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah. My Switch is set up. So, oh, you know, God. at some point this week, I will probably be playing it, hopefully, as long as Apex doesn't take over my life, which it tends to do anyway. So, we will uh, find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. All right. Yeah, man. Uh, th this week, we will actually be talking about Apex. There's no story, but I have some questions for you guys because... Uh, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of crap been going on. There's not a lot of gaming news, in 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 the games region. There's been a lot of drama in our community, and uh, it's been kind of crazy. And we will start it off. I even put in on our show notes. It says Blizzard asshole. So, uh, if you guys have not heard yet, and it's still being updated, um, uh, as far as I know, uh, Game Informer has been on it every time they have an update they're updating the the article that they put out but the blizzard the blizzard president uh jay allen brack is leaving the company after being named an activision blizzard lawsuit update all right so um if you guys haven't been 
keeping up with this. Uh, I think last show I did tell everybody to that they that you should be keeping up with this, especially if you want to work in the gaming industry. Um, about the craziness that's been going on. Um, I took the time to actually read uh, the article. They got I think IGN was the ones that got uh, to interview a couple people that were in the mid, like the middle of it all. Um, basically it was a lot of, uh, sexual harassment going on within the workplace. And it's not like your normal, like, Hey man, he groped me the wrong way. It was like some really, I mean, it's all disgusting. It's, it's, it's terrible stuff, um, that happened. And, um, uh, it's all coming to light up to the point where, uh, Ubisoft has been, uh, been pretty vocal about it. They stay or uh, the people in Blizzard and Activision staged a huge walkout, and they've been outside the studio. Um, and also, they are talking about um, getting a union in the game industries. That game industry should have should be un- unionized, uh, which I totally agree. Um, again, uh, if you guys wanted to catch up on this, it is on IGN. Uh, you can read all that stuff there. Um, basically or so uh, what i'm going to ask you guys is uh what have you got if you guys have been keeping up with this what are your thoughts on the situation so far and um uh have you been keeping up so uh alan you can go ahead and go first man uh yeah i mean i've ke- i've kept up with the whole situation especially things like this that uh you know affect uh women and uh people people of color also have been affected on this so it's a very uh strong topic a uh, very it's a topic that tends to uh gets kind of brushed or buried down into um gaming because it's kind of like one of those un like those unspoken things that people tend to do and a lot of women have been talking about things like this for years it's not something that just um like and a lot of people are like oh well like why didn't they say anything like you don't get to determine when someone you know speaks out or whatever the case may be so uh, that whole narrative needs to stop. And then, but again, like this thing's been going on since almost uh, Activision acquired Blizzard in 2008. And the first allegations had started since 09. So like, this is a thing that's been going on for almost a decade. You know what I mean? Pretty much a decade at this point, which is, you know, it's heinous, it's disgusting. And like, there's just a level of like, you know, respect that should be in the workplace in any workplace. And, um, it just because the gaming industry is such a male dominant and very like uh, industry, they think that things like this is okay to get away with. And especially it, it, it usually starts with the higher ups, which is an un- or f- unfortunate thing for people to get into. So like it sucks because it's like, who do you tell? You know what I mean? Especially when a- like HR and all that stuff, like Blizzard and Activision, they kind of like handle all of that on their own. And they're usually going to believe the higher up before they believe any kind of worker, right? So, like, if someone were to go up and be like, this is happening, they're going to be like, no, like, he's a boss, and, like, he wouldn't do something like that. And most of the cases, and most of the time, if most people that you ask, especially women, are going to tell you things like this happen far too often. So, it's something that it needed to be shed light, and I, you know, I sympathize, I feel for the the victims in all this, uh, in the whole situation, and it, it it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, you you just don't want to read about it. Like, you don't want to see it, but it needs to be seen so that people understand that this is happening and it's happening way too often. So, like, it just needs to stop. And Blizzard, I think, I mean, Activision Blizzard is going to be a hard recovery from this one because they are getting all of this coverage. A lot of people are leaving the company. A lot of games are be- becoming, um, you know, delayed and things like that, like the walkouts, this is going to affect their business in a big way. So hopefully that brings change to it because that's what everyone is going to, everyone wants is some change within that, within the, the whole gaming industry about that. So yeah, that's uh, my thoughts on this. My majority of the the stories I read also were talking about how the, the guys who um, worked on uh, uh, World of Warcraft were untouchable they were at a certain yeah. point where they're like oh man this is great and it, it was just like it was majority of those guys that that they just kept like those guys kept coming up in into the yeah. thing where it's just like they thought they could do whatever they wanted mm-hmm. um what i thought was was 
really awesome is that um, the community did come together and um, there were streamers and a lot of people stopped playing uh, their games and instead live streamed and um, shed even more light onto everything and, and, and uh, expressed how how their feelings towards it and um, support towards the workers and everything like that. Uh, Yendi, what, what are your thoughts on it, man? I mean, obviously, really, really crappy situation. Um, uh, coming from, I, I know that uh, in the past, uh, the director, or I think it, I think he was creative director of uh, Warcraft, mm -hmm. was quietly fired back in like 2020. I believe, and it's because now, as we know, it's starting to these, make sense. Yeah, these things, yeah. Uh, but that just tells me that they've been trying to cover this up for the longest time, and it's just, I don't know why it took so long for this to finally come to light. Uh, I read the Bloomberg article, which I think is where the news broke, and Jason Schreier does great reporting as always. It's just the the stuff that I read was absolutely disgusting. You know, that's stuff that should never ever uh, happen in a in a workplace. And it's just, it, it sounds like something from a movie, right? It, it, yeah. Like, it sounds unreal. A horrible almost. movie. The fact that that went on for who knows how long. And then I think what really gets to me is Fran Townsend. The, she is the uh, COO, I think, or something. She's high up, up, up there. She's high up on the board. And she is against whistleblowers. And she is just tone deaf right now. She is digging herself into a deep, deep hole. If you've been following that, she does not understand what's happening. And she's completely against, you know, reforming the company and making it better and listening to the employees. She's completely against that. And before this, it makes sense because before this, she was George Bush's, um, she was on his cabinet and she had something to do with torture and stuff. A oh, lot of torture Lord. allegations on her, so <laughs> that explains a little bit. She's not very, um, she's not very nice. It seems she's very uh, matter of fact and doesn't doesn't care. But yeah, very very disgusting. The only uh, the only time I see this changing is if Bobby Kotick is gone, Fran is gone, most of those higher ups who allowed this to happen are gone. That's the only way I see this ever becoming something good um and even then it's questionable because unless you root the entire upper management which is seemingly where most of this is coming from anyways you know it stems from the top and that's if people see their bosses doing this shit the lower people be below them are going to get a, uh, away with it as well so i think it starts up there they need to just get rid of all that management and just recruit new fresh management younger people who are in touch with reality today and you yeah. know because it seems like all those people were older men who used to be those nerds that got laughed, laughed at and then now they're taking advantage of their newfound power. i guess you could power yeah power yeah. is one and you know like they're using that cloud like oh i was a creative director for warcraft so yeah i think they they use that to their advantage to to uh make the work environment the way it was and just people didn't want to say anything because they knew nothing was going to happen anyways yep so i mean surprise and all the this uh, i mean activision hasn't been in the best spot with with um with consumers anyway um and there's no surprise with this whenever all this came out it, it's kind of sad that people weren't even shocked they were like yeah that makes a lot of sense um well the, more, more people like i said are, are shocked not just because it, I mean, more people weren't shocked about it because of the regularity that things like this. Yeah, happen. exactly. Kept Especially happening. in spaces that, like I said, are mostly male dominant. Like those things happen in a lot of companies. Like Ubisoft had one that basically happened last year. I mean, fucking the governor of New York has sexual assessment, uh, harassment things. Like there's a whole, like all of this stuff is not something that's like, it's not shocking, which is terrible because it, it th these things should not happen. But the problem is it happens so frequently that it doesn't affect people the same way anymore. And more people are more accustomed to seeing it or hearing about it than they are not hearing about it. Yeah. So when when those big names start to, you know, start to come up in things like that, it's just it's very like, oh, well, 
like that's no, no that's no surprise like you know what i mean uh, no is uh, like you know a man is using his his uh his power to sexually harass him, women but, like that's not a surprise like and it's bad like that's terrible that we've come to like that it's happened so many like so often that we are like le- legit like numb to it and i think that's part of the like that's part of the problem also is that like we need actual change like yendi said uh that that the whole like the whole upper management needs to go because mm-hmm. that's just one of the ways to change that culture uh, over there like you know what i mean because you need a brand new culture like and i forgot the name that you said but like she doesn't want that to happen because then she knows if she starts to like see these allegations she's going to know that it was part she was part of the problem and then she's going to lose her job like you know what i mean so that's why she's going to you know strike against it and be like oh i never know anything happened like she's going to try to be completely oblivious to it so that she can keep her job you know what i mean because she is a, at a high position and she was going to want to keep that position so she's going to be like nope that's not true i've never seen anything like that and we see that a lot like you know what i mean like and and it sucks cuz as a woman you would think she could have some empathy and sympathize for the women that had to deal with that. But for her, since she didn't actually ever have to deal with it, it's one of those things where it's not at my front door, so it's not my problem. Yeah. Uh, another crazy thing that I was reading throughout that was um, how many of the male workers uh, didn't realize uh, what was going on. A lot of the the women that, that came forward uh, said they were prepared to like kind of uh, educate them. Uh, which I thought was, was nuts. And to be honest, it's like, I am oblivious to a lot of crap around me, man. I just kind of stay focused on my thing until somebody says something like literally there could be a fire next to me. And then somebody could tap my shoulder and they're like, Hey, there, there's a flame next to you. I'd be like, Oh, Oh shoot. Okay. Well, <laughs> so, um, it's, it's crazy to see those people go through it because those guys even saying like, you know, I always dreamed about working here and this is a dream job and, and seeing seeing the the monster get unmasked is is crazy what it's doing to everybody there um i really hope that uh this gets fixed uh i really hope that um all these creators i i mean i i i i feel like this is going to show a lot of people that you know they they know their worth way more you're happy i always tell people your happiness is happiness over work always all right. You can have um, you can have cert- certain situations. Don't let people back you in a corner. And especially those people that are just like, hey, just hang in there, man. Like it's only a few more months of this bullshit and then you get promoted or you're going to go to the next thing. Blah, blah, blah. Always take care of you. Always. There's always a, a, there was always another option and you and you're going to be able to to back out and, and, and gain from that. Um, but yeah, man, it's crazy. Uh, we will. I mean. There's, it looks like it's not going to stop. It's going to like all these stories are going to continue coming out. So we'll probably have something else, um, uh, more on it next week. Uh, yeah. Cause it looks like it's not slowing down. Uh, did you guys have anything else to touch on it before we moved on? No. Yeah. I, yeah just like, like I said, it's, I mean, yeah, I said all I can say pretty much. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's keep the train of moving horizon is forbidden till next year (laughs) until next year i see i see yeah yeah. you think you're smart with that one (laughs) uh so i'm gonna say that this is i don't think they really confirmed it yet it's all still rumors but don't hold out hope (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay. it, ain't a rumor. it ain't a rumor did they did sony truth. actually confirm it yet or they don't know sony's not gonna come out yeah they're it. not it was the truth <laughs> really? it, it was reported by bloomberg which i'm assuming is jason shire and then jeff grubb discussed yeah. it on giant bomb yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah it's pretty much confirmed oh my god could you imagine so are you guys delaying until next year what they're gonna do the Dave Chappelle. they're gonna do the huh <laughs> i plead the fifth the fifth <laughs> Um, had to use it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, there is. I'm losing my train of thought. No. Okay. So yeah, it's gonna be uh, at this point. It's gonna be delayed till next year. Um, it sucks that we got a PlayStation State of Play and we saw the gameplay of it and everything like that. Um, what I mostly had this in here for is to say, like, to get your guys' opinions on when do you think it says quarter one. 
right, of 2022. Do you actually think that'll happen? All right. Also, at this point, what do you think is like, so I know there's a lot of games um, that were delayed. Also, I just a side note, don't rush to get a PS5 right now. There's nothing for it right now. It, there's no point anymore. Just hold off on it. Just wait um, uh, until these games come out. And then in the article that I was reading, it's just like, you know, um, uh, the, the, the Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut coming out in two weeks. <laughs> people are rushing i feel the stampede near my house rushing to best buy um so a lot of the obviously the, we've talked about this before about games getting delayed and we thought that covid would be the reason for it and and sure enough in this article it says the covid19 pandemic has impacted the production timelines for many major games so <laughs> so we don't get god of war we don't get horizon for Vin west uh, i'm pretty sure death loop is probably going to get delayed again at this point I don't think I'm, that, that game doesn't exist. Uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, and this just all comes back to for full circle that Beyond Good and Evil 2 will never see the light of day. Uh, but anyway, Yendi. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Yendi, what are your thoughts on Horizon Forbidden West? Like, what do you, when do you think it'll actually come out? Do you think it'll come out like the beginning, like in January? Or do you think it's going to be like the tail end of quarter one, whatever that do you guys actually know when the quarter is actually like when they consider it an end March, March. Yeah. End quarter quarter. So do you think, okay. So, so within that time frame, when do you think, when do you think it'll come out? And uh, do you think it'll actually get delayed again? Well, first this is great news for me because I still don't have a PlayStation and that means that you guys can't play it for me and beat it. So but that's still not guaranteed that I'm going to have a PS5 by then anyways, because the shortage, that's still going on until probably, I think I heard like 2023, early 2023, uh, which sucks. But um, yeah, it sucks for all the players that bought a PlayStation 5 early just for this game. I would have bought it just for this game, but I, I couldn't get one. So uh, I, I don't, maybe it's because I'm not in that, that, uh, I'm not a designer, a game designer, or anything, a developer, but I feel like COVID will give you more time to work on these games, uh, being that most of these people are already set up to work from home and everything. It's like, what is it that's keeping you? Is it the voice acting? Is it getting people uh, in a room to do the, the lines? Is it the, the motion capture? To what me, it's I a, I think it's, I feel like, I don't know. I, 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 the only thing that comes to my mind with that stuff is just transferring data. Like if I, if I like get the project in, right. And it's like, Chris is, is, is supposed to be coding this, right. Or, or Yendi's supposed to be graphicking this, but at, at some point he needs to send it over to Susie over here so she can start her side project. I don't know like how that no. works. I'm no. sure, I'm sure that they're that side of stuff of like the data, there's probably a, a weekly like turn in, like, Hey, turn in all your your work for this, this and i'm sure they give them the equipment to do it too they're just like hey yeah. guys this is a, this is to upload this for is sure. to you know this should handle everything that we need you to do here you go so yeah um so that reminds me because destiny was doing their development of the the latest dlc during covid and what they had to do for their voice actors was have them set up their own booth in their house which like, a lot uh, of them do lance, have already yeah lance riddick that's his name right the guy who does Zavala, he had it in his closet and it worked out perfectly. And you know, it that works. I'm not I'm not I don't think there's a lot of voice lines for Horizon. Then again, it is a much bigger game with a lot of NPCs, but I bet you most of these NPCs are done by only a handful of people anyways, kinda like Skyrim style. Uh that's oh, it's raining. Um <laughs> that uh <laughs> sorry, it's it really loud. I was like, dang. Um, and now to yeah, the weather. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get, I don't get what, what exactly is delaying. I hope that in Sony actually confirms it. They explain a little bit as to why, because people need a reason uh, right now. Because I'm, oh no, I guess they no, we don't need a reason really anymore. Stay. Everybody's yeah. just kind of like, you know what, it's expected. <laughs> and uh, for our audio listeners, if you guys can't see Alan, he's been itching the whole time. <laughs> he's, I'm just yeah. looking at your screen. He's just shaking his head. He's like. Mm -mm, uh, uh, mm. Listen, <laughs> you know what? Let, let me let me finish my thought here. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, so 
I, I guess the more time that we give the developers, the the more polished the game will be. I'm assuming that they were nearing uh, that that final gold disc where they were ready to go, and maybe they're using this time now to just iron out a few few bugs or just try to get the game as ready to go for for release. And as far as when I think it'll be released, I think it's going to be the same day that the first Horizon was released, which I think was February 28th. That is my guess on when that game's going to be released. There was no collector's edition, correct? Announced it was just a normal thing, right? When they announced the game, they didn't announce anything special. No. I bet you they. I bet you they come back out with something like that. They're like, hey, we have a. But they usually do it for it anyway. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, hey, we gotta, you know, get this saber tooth thing. <laughs> Here's Statue. Thing, okay? But anyway, go ahead, Alan. Yeah. Here's what's happening. It's all a lie. COVID <laughs> has nothing to do with this. This is simply because of business. Because enough people do not have a PlayStation 5 and they want to market and sell it at the highest price they possibly can because they know that's going to be one of their biggest profits. Now, this is still coming out on PS4, yes. But they designed this, and the cost of the game was still for PS5. So they, the majority of the cost is they need to re get that reimbursed by p- more people having a PS5. So they need those first day COVID, sales. Yeah. yeah, they're using COVID as a pitch to wait till more people have some PS5. They know this is a big title, and they know that they're gonna get a lot of sales and it's going to look good on their first week numbers for the more people who have PS5. So they're just literally waiting. And instead of being honest about this in the beginning, like when these uh, consoles first launched, they, they weren't. And they were like, Oh, we have all these games. Cause you remember how many people were like giving Xbox all this crap in the world that, Oh, they're not going to have an exclusive till 2020, like two, but like Xbox was 100% upfront about them not having exclusives until this set of time they said late 2021 or and early 2022 and everyone freaked out now sony just did it the backhanded way they didn't tell us any of that stuff we were supposed to get god of war and horizon this year and now we're not going to get either one of them so like i don't get why like i don't even understand this whole like notion of why people were even upset at, in the first place because we we all knew this was going to happen i don't think there was anyone in here in this room who was just like yo we expected horizon this year that's like we episodes con- that's like episode two of i, yeah. I did <laughs> I don't, if you go back i i say that i'm still expecting it this year oh well i i know i did not because once they waited this long to start dropping stuff then you you already knew i was like mm, it took too long is now it's you know because even if it was it was supposed to come out in November, now you're gonna push it back. So I I agree with the Andy's date. I definitely think February is like the perfect date now, but I think this is a a ploy. I think we're randomly in November, uh, like October November around the holidays, we're gonna see an influx of PS fives out of nowhere, and then you're gonna wait till that whole sale happens in the where in Christmas ish when people get some more PS fives. And stuff like that. I already saw some PS5s on sale today at Costco, mm-hmm. and then February they're gonna there's gonna be a, that whole wave that had PS5s for Christmas, and then boom, Qu- quarter one best way to start it off. You drop Horizon. Your quarter one numbers look amazing because everyone got their games. They got the system in quarter four, and in quarter one you have a big big title. So and then they'll probably we probably will get God of War at the end of next year too. So. I think that's what they're waiting for, honestly, is more people to have the system. Yeah. Stop using COVID as an excuse, man. Don't you know because the earth is so flat that COVID is... No, but anyway. (laughs) How did we get here? And also, Sony, you see what you're doing to my friend Yendi? He just came out the other day and said Fortnite is his favorite game and the best game of all time. And here we are. You broke the man. Look at him. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Ariana Grande is in Fortnite. Yeah, right? I'm, I and I will be downloading for that concert. So, you know. <laughs> I know you are. Yeah. And I know why. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um anyway. <laughs> uh my thoughts on it um 
Oh yeah. What? When do you think it'll? Do you think it'll come out? Do you think it'll get delayed again, or do you think? No, I think what Yandy say. I, I agree with the same date. I think February ish will be the the perfect time for like because I think if I'm not mistaken, quarter four also ends like January, like like first week of January ish, or something like that, or like really close to the end of December. So February gives them about a month out. Yeah. So February is like the perfect date. I would, I'd see that coming out. Gotcha. Uh, I'm going to assume the same thing. And also, I think we're going to get three um, editions of the game. So, yeah. just the standard, deluxe, and... and um, we might even get a PS5 system, a Horizon. Or, system. you know, I'd like a Horizon, uh, the shell side, you know, pop that off and put the... Well, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So... Anyway, and then also, if there is a collector's edition, Yendi, you do have to buy it for your wife. You're welcome. Collector's edition. Yeah. What? You're gonna you're gonna get her the uh, oh, if whatever I, special edition. Listen, listen, man. I I'm not into all that bullshit. I didn't, I didn't say it was for you. Even even did not say it was for you. For a fucking steel case book, whatever. Fuck no, that. If you okay. get a statue, if you get a statue give, give of her, no. you, yeah, no. it's not for you. It's no. for your wife. I'm, I'm helping your wife out. <laughs> I'm not a fool. I'm not a fool either. Don't don't look you, over here. You, Stop yeah, looking. Exactly. Stop looking exactly. over here. Don't look over here. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Actually, you know what? It, it depends on what they offer. Because, you know, I'm always open to really cool stuff. But it has to really get, get you know, I have, it has to be something I really want to showcase. And that's rare. Uh, I like game maps. So if they have a... Have, <laughs> did, did Horizon have a game map in the box? No, right? I don't think so. Not part one. They don't do that anymore, really. They need to. The, my room is full of them. They have. There's like five up right now. Look, I love game maps. Get those game, game maps. Take more Yendi, but you. I, I love them. They bring back so much, so many memories. Skyrim, Morrowind, yeah. Witcher, whatever the fuck that is. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, we're gonna skip uh, story number three. We're gonna come back to it because I feel like that's gonna be a long conversation, and we'll go to four. Um, so. A lot of fans should be excited about this. This was a small article I passed by, and it's going kind of unnoticed. Um, Half-Life 2 is being remastered, but it's uh, by a fan. And the cool thing about it is that um, Valve is completely okay with it. They're letting, they're letting them do this. So obviously it's going to be a while before it even comes out. I don't know how they're going to release it. Nobody knows, but the big, the big thing about it is that Valve... Um, Valve is completely fine with it, and I I think that's an awesome thing for that company to do. Um, I know it just kind of sheds more light on their game, and it's kind of they can use it kind of as an excuse to be like, "Hey, you have a remake, and we don't have to do it for you." <laughs> so it could be that option. But also, do you guys think like uh, we'll start with you, Alan? Do you think that more companies should be doing this? Should they let? Um, I know there was. I'm trying to think of a game. There's some Star Wars game that these modders are creating that's like a full world and everything like that. And I forgot what game they're creating it in. Um, but that could get stopped, obviously, for uh, for licensing purposes. Purposes. So do you think like do you think more companies should let some of these guys do that? I mean, if they want them to do it, they should just hire them. Honestly. The problem is when you get into that world, right, of basically telling people you can create our games, you have to then find a way how you're going to let make them profit off of it. Like, you know what I mean? Because you you could a lot of people are not going to just be like, yes, I'm going to make this game for you. I'm going to spend hundreds of hours making this game to not take some type of profit off of it. The game companies will be more than happy to let that happen, because if more people are buying the games, then that money is still going to their pocket. And those people who made the game are not contracted technically. You know, well, actually, I mean? real quick, uh, these are actually. Uh, it says here. Um, this guy says I've been able to confirm this project's legitimacy being made by the former Half Life Two update team. So the guys who made the updates for the game are the ones that are trying are fans of the game and they want to try to do a remaster of it themselves. So I think that's that's pretty dope. Um, no, it is. But I know, like I said, there's other people out there that want to do this. In general, they do it themselves at home. Yeah, they do. But like I said, though, it's also like, are you? is this game going to be free? 
is this game going to, because there's a lot of like money implications that happen with this now, because now, you know, as a, if, if I was making one of these games, I would obviously want to get paid for it because I'm not going to make, like I said, make a, a whole game for everyone to play. And then the only people who are making money off of it is Valve. Like, obviously you would hope you could get some type of recognition for it, mm-hmm. but to be doing a whole project of remastering something for free seems a bit, <laughs> seems a bit, uh, doesn't it's not the smartest in my opinion. So I think it's cool that they they you know people want to do things like that and you know people do it all the time. I mean if you look at um well, we were just talking about this yesterday, uh, the guy who did that whole thing for um he redid the last episode of Mandalorian, um season two. He did the whole thing over. It was a YouTube video and Lucasfilms actually signed him, like they signed him to a deal. So. It's actually, you know, it, in those situations, I completely understand and I completely get it. But again, like, how do you? It's you on now YouTube. You, you said, "What is this?" Well, I need huh? to know. Yeah, you can look it up. But um, there, it's how do you like, you know, like uh, I guess manage or negotiate how someone's gonna do this, how people are gonna get to it. Like, are you? Is this just for like free rare? Like free rare? Are they gonna be able to just play it whenever they want to? So. I think it's a cool idea, but there's so much more logistics to it that I think it could become a bigger problem at the end than it's worth. So I think if people want to do it, let them do it. But you have to find a way to distribute it the right way, I think. What about you, Yendi? What do you think? Do you think there that more that more companies should let this happen or Oh, uh well first I've only played like five minutes of Half Life and I think it was I was like 12 um and it was scary i remember that uh so i don't know much about half-life that's, that's about it i think this, this is one of those franchises that needs to just just uh just stop right i mean we already got a lot out of it a lot of mods a lot of games ca- came out of it so that's nice thank you for that uh, actually some of my favorites came from half-life but uh why like they're they're not gonna make that much money off of this there's no way it's an old ass game. They're gonna remaster it now. Anyways, um, should more companies do this? No, I don't think so. I think I think p- the people who are doing these mods should just keep their hands off of it. Keep this as a you know a, a side, like a little side hobby thing where they learn. And then the best case scenario is that developers do pick them up, hire them. I've heard of a lot of stories like this uh, where they do hire these people because obviously there's a lot of talent there. If you're spending this much time working on this, that's really why they're doing it. I mean, I feel like secretly down below, like deep down, they know that if they make something really good off of just a mod, that's going to get a lot of eyes. I mean, that's going to get a lot of potential employers. So they continue doing it. That's why a lot of these people do it, knowing that they're going to get a cease and desist anyways, because they know they're going to get exposure for it, and then mm-hmm. hopefully they get a job. Uh, so no, I don't think so, because uh, then you ho- you open a whole new can of worms. If they officially support this, now these people are on the line to make sure that the the bug fixes are, are there and, and taken care of. Uh, there has to be a whole support team. They have There's, there's just so much into it. They, they have to give the code over to the developers, and it's just it, it sounds like it's a big headache for the, for the company, unless they bring them in, and then everything is made into one, but... What if this company is already planning something else and they don't have the resources to add to this mod game? You know, it's just, it's cool, but I I rarely see a mod work out to something good. It's very rare. It happens, but it's, it's very rare, I think. So yeah, just just let it, just let it go. Just, you know, hope for Half-Life 3 in the next 10 years or so. And, We're yeah. never getting Half-Life 3. Bygones, baby. Bygones. What'd you, you say, know? Alan? I said we're never getting a Half Life. Yeah, <laughs> I, I never, I've never got the hype around Half Life because I said I never really played it, but I know well, a lot of people. Yeah, I gotta stop um, being a really baby and play Half Life, Alex. I really gotta get well, it. Well, you again. should uh, play yeah. Half Life, Yendi, so you can understand. Yeah, it's you amazing. played all of them. Yes, I have. Nice. Um, <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. That's that's the same reason <laughs> I, I can't go back to my favorite game of all time anymore because I just it's so graphically. Yeah, and mechanically just bleh, you know, I, the nostalgia is there. I mean, I'm sure for you, the nostalgia is there for Half Life, the nostalgia is there for me for Morrowind. But this part of me personally that just stops playing because 
it's not the same. It is just nostalgia keeping me there. So, yeah, I'll just move on. I, I'm, I've, I've accepted that I won't get a Morrowind remake, you know, but there's plenty of mods out there I can play if I wanted to, but none of them have become official. That reminds me, there was a Skyrim mod called the the Forgotten Shores or something like that, or there's something that was made into its own separate game oh, completely. Oh, Forgotten City. The Forgotten City. It was completely different setting outside of uh, Skyrim and everything. It looks, it's set like in the Roman Empire. Ooh. It's got really good reviews. It just yeah. came out. It just went yeah, out? It, it just out, came like, out recently. or what? Yeah, like yeah, a recently. week ago. So that, that's a good... See, how do they distribute that though? You have to go to a website See, and download it, or how does that how does that's that even what I'm work? Saying, though. That's it's why its you own have... separate thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not connected to Skyrim. But the Elder Scrolls and Bethesda is known for their construction set, their the Elder Scrolls TES construction set, which is their modding tools, and they're they're extensive. I, I've I've dabbled in them way in, way in the past, and there's just so many options. You can make a whole damn new game completely and just reuse the same assets and engine. And it's it's amazing what they allow you to do. So that's cool for Bethesda to to let people do that. You can if you go look at the the previews for that game, The Forgotten City, you'll see a lot of Skyrim uh, quirks. Yeah. And I think they still use the same engine, so you'll notice a lot of things that wow. are very similar. I'll have to check yeah, that out. Just, yeah. Wow. Uh, me personally, I think um, uh. I think smaller companies should let people do this. Uh, I do kind of like Valve doing. I I I, I kind of like Valve being okay with it. Make me a Portal Three. I'd take it. You know what I mean. So um, I think it'd be dope. Hold on one second. My sister's calling me. There we go. Um, I think it'd be dope. I think uh, it gets like you guys said. It gets eyes on these talented people, and I hope they they continue to get picked up. So, um, moving on to our last topic of the night uh it's not a new story well it's kind of a new story um so as of lately everybody's been a lot of streamers and uh players and everything have left uh warzone uh warzone had a big drop this week um due to everybody's just sick of the the hacking man um there's been a lot of hacking and it's not only in warzone it's been happening in apex but in in rank in ranked in the higher ranks um so I don't see it because I'm not in the higher ranks, so the game's still fine for me. But anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, we had like today I've seen or no, there was a video put out by uh, one of the people I watch, Courage, who says he's done playing Call of Duty. Um, on TikTok today, I saw a, a clip of Nick Merck saying like, you know, Tim was asking him like, hey, what's the new video? And he's like, me leaving Call of Duty. And he's like, wait, are you quitting? And he's like, I mean, I might play the next update, but I'm on Apex now. Uh, so and even as we speak right now on my right as i'm looking at my follow channels it's literally apex 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 all the way down so apex has hung in there and is take is taking every everything <laughs> they're yeah. killing it right now um what do you what do you guys think of the situation uh alan i'll start with you since you're a big a big apex player you play every day uh and i know how much you love the game well, it's about Everybody's time. trash at it. What? I got two uh, dubs today. What did you, you say? Check on the <laughs> I screen. Say both. Two dubs. Anyway, <laughs> here's the thing. Uh, I'm glad everyone's coming into Apex now and realizing that this game is so much better than uh, Warzone. It's uh, Respawn deserves this. You know, EA, we don't like them. I, I'm not, I'm not going to say we don't like EA. But EA, you've done some questionable things. But at least you haven't tampered with this game so that people can it still enjoy it. The higher ranks, it's it's Apex Predators because people are cheating so they can become Apex Predators and stuff like that in ranked. Uh, but it's it it's it's getting, you know, they're handling it as much as they can. But you know, the the, the cheaters just they always seem to get better. So it's just it it's it's one of those crazy Well it's things. a war it's a war right now. I know Bungie yeah, Bungie and somebody else is suing uh, one of the top cheating websites that people are buying yeah. cheats for. Um, a lot of them be, are being taken down. Do you think yeah. more eyes on Apex? Do you think we're going to start seeing more problems, or do you think it's pretty locked down tight no, where they have? I it? mean, they 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 should be fine. Um, the thing is, I mean, Apex even before people started switching over are, had also reported to have a hundred million players. So like, 
whether those players are all at, no, obviously all of them are not active, but I'm saying like that was still a pretty much similar number to what Warzone had also. So, um, but yes, Apex didn't have the traffic that uh, Warzone has because Warzone does have a lot, a lot of Call of Duty fans who go and play like all every day and things like that. So um, for Apex, I'm just happy that they are getting, I mean, it's season 10 that they've made it to. And I've been playing this game for pretty much two years. And I mean, two, three years on and off. But like I've real this last year, I've pretty much been really back into it. So it's nice that it, it did stand the test of time. And now that these new eyes are getting on it and these new players are playing it and enjoying it, which is I, which I think is the important thing. Because a lot of times um, it's hard for someone to have played a game for so long and then they go into another one and be like, they usually are just like, I don't want to play this anymore. I'm going back to what I'm comfortable with. And a lot of these guys are trying to play this and trying to understand the game. And they're, they're back, like, you know, they are a couple of years behind, but they're still really good players. Like, you know what I mean? So... I think it's it's good for Apex. It's good for the company for them to have this kind of traffic, which means we might get more Twitch rivals now. We might get more like you know all these other things. I know the Apex League is is um, taking off little by like um, I know they just announced their new season. So like Apex is getting this following that you know they want, and they are constantly working on the game, even when I have my issues with them and I'm complaining about like connectivity issues. They usually are in there to try to fix it as fast as they can besides the 4th of July incident. But you know what I mean? But most of the time <laughs> they, they, they are pretty accurate. They listen to what people want in the game or they try to give you, they, they've given us a new character every season. They've given us like this season is going to be the first season. All three maps are going to be in um what you call it. All three maps are going to be in rotation for battle Royale and there's ranked arenas now. So they're, adding new game modes they the game is building they they're building the game as much as they can and i think it's awesome that these new players are going to get to see apex what i feel now is the best it's been so yeah um, i think it's awesome. i mean they've always been listening to players up to the point where i remember everybody's just like put in a solo mode put in a solo mode and they're like guys you don't want that. that you don't yeah. you don't want solo mode we do want solo mode you don't and then they're saying people kept asking for it and he's like yeah. okay and they put it out and everybody's like, Hey, you know what? You guys were right. And they're like, I, that's what we're saying. But at least because they put it out there. At least they put it. Yeah. At least they put it out there to, for people to try it and then understand like where they're coming from. Uh, Yendi, what do you think about what's going on? Do you think you're going to be uh, deleting Warzone? The Look, man, everybody knows, everybody who watches this video knows I'm the biggest hypocrite when it comes to this Warzone game. Okay. Cause I talk <laughs> trash about it all the damn time, as you guys know, but there are those moments where the game is really, really fun. And that's when you don't run across these fucking bunny hopping, slippery ass pigs just, just like today? jumping around like fucking bun oh my god. Don't even get me started. Anyways, <laughs> yes. Uh I've only ran into cheaters maybe maybe two, three times and yes, yeah, so it was very infuriating, but I wasn't surprised because I've heard of so much of the widespread cheating issue. Uh and with this decline in Warzone, uh the player base, most of those people are going to go to Apex, which then means the more people that are playing, the more opportunities there are for cheats to come about. New cheats. You know, it's going to happen. I mean, Apex already has cheating, as you know. I've never run into it, though, but it's not as widespread as Call of Duty. And I feel like also, I think technically Apex is a smaller game compared to Call of Duty, as far as, like, the, the weapons, because uh, weapons, characters... Uh, I guess Apex has more characters, but I think overall it's it's a little bit smaller. I don't know if they can pull in the same numbers as COD does. For some reason, even though both games are free to play, it, it always seems like Warzone has more players active at any given time. Uh, not saying that Apex is a slouch in that at all, but um, good good for Apex. It's it's a good game. It is definitely better than Warzone in pretty much every regard. Movement. Gunplay, I think. I, I think gunplay, maybe they're a little bit tied there. I like the gunplay of Warzone, but the time to kill is too fast. Whereas uh, Apex is, I think Apex is just right. What? As yeah. of right now. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to give yeah. you three numbers, all right? We're going to do, okay. we'll do Fortnite, right? Mm -hmm. Warzone and Apex. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, here we go. So, um, 
eighty seven point six thousand viewers, two hundred and seventy six thousand viewers, and then uh, ninety eight point eight thousand viewers. Ninety eight is Fortnite. Okay. So would you say with two hundred thousand? Yeah. That's got to be Apex with all the streamers on right now. That's <laughs> yeah. got to be Apex. Straight up. There's, there's no way. And then the other one's Warzone. 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 Yeah, so Apex is at the top of its thing. And then uh, coming up from the shadows is Splitgate for some freaking reason because people can't get on the fucking game. But anyway, Whoa. congrats to them. <laughs> Congrats to them. Congrats to them. Um, they, <laughs> uh, man, split wrong. game. Sounds like you got some. Uh, some I mean, it's just kind of funny because I played it in the beginning and I had fun with it, and then it got popular. And I was like, oh, I'll jump back on, and now they're getting overloaded. It's not their fault. I'm happy for them. I'm like happy. two years ago, right? Am it's I crazy? been it's I been two years. I yes. Swear. But yes. you know this, I, that this happens with games sometimes, yeah. man. Like, Think about it. Among Us, when it blew up, Among Us. It was out for out a while, for yeah, years. <laughs> for years. Yeah. It's been out for four years, and then and then all of a sudden, well, everyone was like, "I want to play this." And the quarantine well, really did help that. So. I remember Split Gate getting a lot of uh, a lot of attention. Like a lot of the YouTubers that I watched were playing it. Yeah, I was having fun because it was played. literally I, I, yeah. as it was advertised to me. It's like Portal in Halo, and I was like, "That sounds yeah. really cool." <laughs> and then and I it went was for really it. Really fun. Yeah, it was a really fun game for sure. It's just. Uh, I swear I went through some kind of port time portal and all of a sudden the games, you know, what, what last time I played, I guess the population was so low that it was just filled with bots. Cause I was doing really good. And this is when I was just starting out on PC. I'm like, there's no way, there's no way I'm this good with mouse and keyboard oh, the best already. In the game. Yeah. yeah. I started noticing <laughs> some weird shit happening. Oh, wait a second. This, this, this. And then the, it died and then nothing. I never heard anything about it. And then all of a sudden, boom. They're back in the news. Like, what the what the fuck happened? Like, what what happened between now and then? Like, what? And I think so. I think Halo being delayed actually helps that too because it, it it's it kind of gives people that newer Halo feeling because you know the game has been updated and stuff like that. So I think that helped. But I don't know, man. Like, I feel like it just depends on the right place, right time, and some games just get that that wave that they come out at the right time or the right people are playing it. And then everyone plays it. Like, listen, yeah. it's crazy. With Halo, right? One, I think it's awesome that they let us stream and people were able to stream and make videos on the, the tech preview um, to see where the game was. Uh, I didn't stream this portion, but um, I played a lot of it. That game's doing great. That grappling hook. It's so much fun. <laughs> oh, I, I never saw you use it, actually. I didn't use it in the stream because they, they added it onto a map, and I played before work. I, I was rushing, and I was like, let me try this out. And uh, uh, there was a moment where the gravity hammer was on a platform, and I literally ran by. Like, when, you, when, when this game comes out, there's going to be a lot of flashy movement for people. Whenever they get the mechanics down, I was able to slide by, grab the hammer, pull it to me, right? Grapple the roof and swing up and then smash on somebody. But you get like three grapples. It's kind of like on the side with grenades and stuff. But yeah, that game is doing very well. I'm excited to see all the players. Wait, and you're stuff like you're that. limited to just three? You Whenever you pick it up, like it's equipment. So there's also, you guys remember the bubble shield in Halo 3? Mm -hmm. um, so they have a version of that, but it's not a bubble shield. It's a, it's a frontal shield that you can shoot through right but in halo 3 the bubble shield you would have to wait for it to to you know uh disappear for you to get somebody so somebody could just hide in there uh in this one you can shoot through it so you shoot and then like a panel will break and you you can start shooting through that panel so you can break down the shield entirely um so it takes a little bit they just copied rampart's move <laughs> that's sure that sounds like <laughs> <laughs> sure they did that so that was all over the map so you got what you picked one up uh, grappling hooks, whenever you grab it, uh, whenever you grab the attachment, uh, it's three at first. Um, what other things that I see? I think that's about it, really, for equipment-wise. But it's going to be fun. I wish I got into some vehicles because I wanted to see what that was like. But, yeah. Was there still sprint? Yes. Yeah. There's still sprint. No boost. No Yandy's boost at judging. all. Yendi's judging so, already. So, uh, but I'll, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll tell you what that gra that grappling hook 
<laughs> that grappling hook is gonna be funny. If I get destroyed with it, I'm gonna laugh really hard. I didn't use it on a character though. I didn't use it on a person. So that's the it's only not thing. My Halo. Not Halo, huh? It's not. Listen, it's, not, it's, it's free to. Call of Duty on here. It's free to play. You'll play it. First of all, Call of Duty doesn't even have a grappling hook, and they've never had a grappling I'm hook. Actually, I'm surprised they don't. They did. Yeah, because they've they had it. Oh, yeah. Really? They've had it in the past in. Black Ops 3, instead of doing, they did a boots on the ground mode, right? But it was with a grappling hook. You still had to, because the map was set up for jetpacks. And they're like, here's boots on the ground, but you, you need to get up on that ledge. So here's a grappling hook. And you use the grappling hook. <laughs> yeah. All, all these shooters are going to be the same thing in, in 10 years. They're all going to be the same damn you know, game with different skins. Is- you know why they what basically what happened is they saw a game the best first person shooter ever um titanfall 2 and that's, oh, like, that's fortnite bro and now the first of all fortnite's not a a, a first person shooter so it will be so no, will they not. saw that game and they were like you know what's really cool the grappling hook in that but grappling hooks are fun man i'm here for it all the time you could put it in whatever game i'm actually about to play ghost runner and you use a lot of grappling hook in that and i'm very excited <laughs> <laughs> yeah yendi hater god i can't i can't you're, wait you're, i can't i can't wait you're for the reason cod is successful i can't wait for halo to come out i can't wait for halo to come out and then i'm gonna convince yendi to download it and then i'm gonna grapple hook you every he's gonna time. play it he's gonna play it it's free to play, free to play. It, you'd be dumb yeah. not to it's free to play you're not wasting any money <laughs> and he has Game Pass, so he'll be, he's gonna play. Yeah. Oh, I'm playing it for sure. <laughs> all right. Well, that's pretty much gonna do it for uh for the show. That's all the stories. It was a very light week for me. Um, do you guys have anything to add before I close this portion out? No, I got nothing. Mm-hmm. All right. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to um check our YouTube page on. Fr- the video will be uploaded Friday, Friday. right? Yeah. yeah. Wh- which one? The which LPF one? debrief. Um, I I may I don't know. Maybe to it might be out tomorrow because we'll see. <laughs> okay. Well, um, keep an eye out for because this week we'll be dropping the Jungle Cruise um LPF with Yendi um, which we'll be recording here in just a few moments, right after I tell you guys to follow us on Twitter at official uh, LPFT. On YouTube at Last Place Fire Team, and all your podcasting uh, apps, right? Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, because by all the way, podcasting platforms. Platforms. That's what I want to use. That's a smart word. Platforms. Make sure to share it with your friends, and uh, be sure to tune in next week. Um, also, uh, uh, we'll probably. I might be streaming, probably Friday, maybe Friday. We'll see. Keep an eye out. Like I said, follow us on Twitter for all those updates. And, you know uh, what? Listen, <laughs> the best thing about this is that we can still make some content. Oh, this man. This is totally going on something. Because <laughs> this is at, look at this pose that we're getting right now. This is actually perfect. And I'm... <laughs> <laughs> listen, guys, we, we are going to... I think we are going yeah, to... Yeah, we're going to end it. We're going to end it. Because, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah let's, we're going to fix this. We're going to figure out what we can do to see if we can make this video today. If not, we'll try to make it tomorrow or something like that. So Chris was right initially. It might be coming out on Friday, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> because with the way that this is looking. And then Chris and I, we're going to talk about when we're going to do um, uh, Suicide Squad. We'll probably drop it as soon as we both have watched it and had some time to do it. It might not be the following Friday because we don't want to wait that long normally. So as long as our schedules align, we'll... We'll get in there, and then we'll talk about Suicide Squad, which has been getting some really good reviews, so we're super excited about that. But that is going to end the live stream for today, since uh, clearly Yendi is having some issues. We are going to still put this at the end of the vi- the show video, just because this is <laughs> hilarious. So until next week, guys, Fire Team out.